So this is day 10 and I'm on the road between Sargoda and Mekenis. That's about uh, 700 kilometers. So I'm having this natural phenomena here. This is not fog. <laughs> this is actually sand. So I have to keep my mouth closed tightly and only breathe through the nose. Otherwise you're grinding sand in your teeth all the time. But look at this. This is all sand. You can barely make out the mountains. Wow. So these gentlemen here saved me. I'm in a long, long desert stretch and I ran out of gas and so I asked here where's the next gas station and these gentlemen saved me <laughs> selling me five liters thank you so much <laughs> Well, this is just about two minutes after I stopped uh, for the gas on the last clip there. I just wanted to reiterate once more. I mean, it is really lonely here. There is, you know, a little town every 150 kilometers, but they don't have gas stations. <laughs> and so he sold a few drinks there in his store and uh saw my plight and sold me five liters of gasoline and filled it in as you saw and holy moly um <clears throat> he only charged me regular rate for 85 uh dinari for the five liters that's what i would have paid at a gas station so i gave him a hundred because i was so thankful and he insisted to give me the 15 back so wow that's uh stunning and i really got saved by the bell here if you look around <laughs> if you get stuck you are stuck so there is a lot of trust in my burgi here all right my love this one is just for you you love fog i've been driving all morning through this it's of course not fog but it's sand <laughs> but uh, i thought you'd love it anyway Oh my gosh, it's like a Fata Morgana or a illusion, a desert illusion. <laughs> There's still dead sand fog around. And so from afar I thought, is, is this a gas station? Could it be? No, it's probably just an illusion. But oh boy, there it is. Woohoo! The ride is as unforgiving <laughs> as it is in cheap movies that, that uh, one can see about your desert travel and stuff like this. And uh, so this is here my lookout from the gas station. Um, so you drive 50, 60 kilometers and you see a few abandoned houses and otherwise only rock and dust <laughs> and flat as a pancake. And this is the road over there, which is not bad. There's some rough patches for a kilometer or two, but then you can go again 100 kilometers an hour, which is really nice. So we're about to enter a little town. I'll try, uh, well, actually, a big town with not too many abandoned houses. Let's see what a typical desert town looks like.
So I just came through a canyon and I couldn't show it to you because it was all uh, dusty, uh, one couldn't see anything. But uh, I'm through the mountains, almost 2,000 meters high and there are these beautiful valleys in between. Wow. Yeah, so it's very interesting. I'm high in the mountains, um, over 2,000 meters high. Um, and all of a sudden, it feels a lot more European. The, the houses, this little one has actually an angled roof. This sort of architecture you would see anywhere in suburban Europe. And there's little castles on the way and uh, there was a park where the monkeys were running around and it was a beautiful, and I couldn't stop unfortunately, but it was a beautiful pine tree park um, with a lovely smell and uh, the tourists could go and see the monkeys there. <laughs> it was beautiful, but it's becoming a lot more European feel now. Look what I mean about European feel. Um, the houses here in the neighborhoods start looking distinctively European. Amazing. Now we are still about 300 kilometers away from the border. So I'm now have arrived at the famous Meknes Square and that on a Friday night, which is of course for Muslims a big deal. And so you've got everything from snake charmers to <laughs> um, cheap plastic toys to uh, a nice put the ring on the bottle game. And uh, I'm looking for some food. I might go up there. That does look promising there. <laughs> so anyway. I'm pretty exhausted as it is. So uh, I'm gonna be quick and turning. traffic to get to the hotel which is of course hidden away in the smallest little old town corner and uh, some Moroccans said to me yeah I'll help you over the street because I took off the street we'll do it the Moroccan way all eyes closed this is where my official parking spot is it's about a kilometer and a half away from my hotel and I forgot my glasses my reading glasses so I have to go and get them <laughs> so I'm 
fighting my way through the crowds over there. It's behind those rides over there somewhere. <laughs> okay, well, we'll see what happens. I was too pessimistic. There it actually is, my burgi. I haven't found any good street food yet, so um, still looking. Hoping I'll get something there. So far, the only thing I could find were some sweet stuff, um, sugarcane juice, and uh, well, the corn on the cob over the wooden grill. But um, still looking for something, I don't know, substantial. Right, I think I found something a glass of mixed juice and sort of a Moroccan duna <laughs> of sorts, <laughs> which is uh, a sausage and um, freshly fried onions. It smelled great, so we'll see what it's like. So I have to tell you this story quickly before I go to bed, because Moroccan people, whether this is in a most extreme tourist trap like this, or whether that's somewhere out in the desert uh, with just one house, are extremely friendly people. And so I'll have to quickly tell you the story. So I was parked right here um, in this busy street because the GPS says my hotel is here, but obviously there ain't no hotel. <laughs> so some elderly gentleman, Moroccan gentleman, walked up to me and said um, uh, you can't park here, this is a bad spot. And I said, well, I need to get to the hotel. Well, which one? So I told him and he says, yeah, I'll, I'll guide you to it. We'll go to the parking spot. And I said, no, no, uh, the luggage is rather heavy and I need many items from the bike. So um, we have to actually uh, somehow get the motorbike there. And he said, all right, I'll lead you. So I drove between these two stones. The Berkman just fit there. And uh, then this was a lot fuller still. We went through this amazing crowd to on the bike, me driving the bike, him walking in front of it to the very corner there where I'll take you now. So we are at this corner now that I just showed you, crossing the whole palace through crowds as thick as still over there, honking and beeping and he was shoveling away through the crowd. And now came the more adventurous part. There were hundreds of people streaming against me. I had to drive through this tiny little uh, alleyway here and we were honking, beeping, he was shoveling people <laughs> through. Then there were tables laid out and then they, they had to be shoved aside a little bit for the Bergman to get through. And nobody complained, nobody. Um, either they all understood or they just don't complain, but there was no um, yelling at me or anything so still gonna get you through this alleyway uh, excuse me more <laughs> just running through Merci. so there were hundreds of people streaming this way and then around the corner here and so he was just shoveling through the crowd making room for the brickman moving tables aside that were laid out from store owners and so on this is the hotel door. I parked the Berkman, squeezed it into this corner here. That then was our escape route. <laughs> and uh, 
rang out the the hotel owner and said he'll wait at the bike uh, so that he can show me uh, where to park the bike because remember that's a kilometer and a half away and so on the way back so first of all i carry all the luggage up these stairs <laughs> Here is the lobby, signed in, carried up the stuff this way, Whew. in the heat that's not easy, <laughs> and um, here comes my room. Voila. <laughs> so three beds for one person. So, but this is not the end of the story yet. So down I went again. Then we went through the escape route <laughs> from the hotel. But this time he sat on the back and I honked my way through at, at one kilometer an hour. Uh, that too was very adventurous. Then eventually made it to the parking and then um, paid the parking, which was uh, was it thirty dinari, so that's three euros. That's twenty four hour uh, supervised parking there. And um, and then I said to him, "Look, I I can get back to to my hotel. What can I give you for your trouble?" And I pulled out a, a fifty dinari note that would have been five euros. And he said, "No, I'm, I'm not taking anything." This is just a human service, one human to another. Thanks very much, sir. And I was just stunned. I, would you ever in any spot in Europe ever experience anything like it? Um, so so that's when we parted ways and and uh, just, just like that. So um, my experience in these, what, seven days in Morocco, um, were, were just stunning. Um, the people are amazing here. There is, is a peacefulness wherever you are, even whether it's large crowds like tonight, um, or whether it's in some little, little desert city. Um, the, the character disposition of the people is just absolutely amazing and, and something um, I can learn from a lot. <laughs> So, but now I'm signing off. I've been driving 11 and a half hours today through the desert and um, utterly exhausted. And tomorrow at seven, I have to get up again because I need to get out of Morocco because my motorcycle insurance that I had to purchase at the border is running out tomorrow at midnight. So uh, it's only a couple of hours of drive and the ferry and then I'm... Uh, uh, out of Morocco, so <laughs> and I'll be very sad. Um, also, what is very nice um, about uh, about uh, Morocco is that your money is worth something. So, so the dinner that I just showed you uh, with the juice and and that Moroccan dinner <laughs> of sorts, which was okay actually. Um, what was that? That something like three euros. And uh, this hotel here uh, with air conditioning and a big bathroom and three beds, I mean, it's, it's 20 euros. That includes all taxes, no tips, no nothing. Nobody accepts tips here, which is, which is also very, very refreshing <laughs> in many regards. So, so all of a sudden the gas is reasonably cheap. It's about a Euro 40, somewhere around there per liter. Uh, meanwhile, in Germany, it's a Euro 70, Euro 80. Um, hotels are affordable, food, a whole lunch with, with two drinks and, and a dessert is, is maybe eight euros uh, if, if it's in an expensive location. Um, so I've, I have nothing but good things to say about Morocco. It's, it is amazing. So with that, I'm be signing off.